Telecameras three and four working. Activate radio contact with the outside. Love, wisdom, abundant life. Live a life filled with meaning, purpose, and a sense of accomplishment. Can you hear me? Welcome to the teachings of Enoch. I'm your host, James Allen. Listen every week at this time on KKVV AM 1060 Las Vegas. You can listen online at KKVV.com, on your smartphone using the TuneIn radio app, or listen anytime at teachingsofenoch.com. You can contact me by sending a text message to 702-483-7769. That's 702-483-7769. Or online at teachingsofenoch.com. Let's get started with today's message. Well, welcome to the program. My guest today on the program is Dr. Paul White. And he's the co-author of a book called The Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace, Empowering Organizations by Encouraging People. Thank you very much, Paul, for appearing on the program today, and welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And where are we at in terms of the American workplace today? I mean, on a scale of like 1 to 10, what do you think the satisfaction rate is right now? Well, it, yeah, it sort of depends, you know, what historical period we go back to, but it's unfortunately pretty low and uh, not getting better in spite of the fact that uh, almost 90% of all companies and organizations have some form of employee recognition program. But uh, unfortunately, most people are, are pretty dissatisfied. I, I think part of that may have to do with some unrealistic expectations that w- we've been taught by our culture about what work should be. Or, um, but uh the other factor is that most people just don't hear much positive uh, from their bosses, managers, or coworkers, and so you know it, it gets tough after a time. Uh, one of the things that we, uh, well, as you know, is that uh, I think it was Maslow's Ar- hierarchy of needs talks about the, you know, we need, of course, food to survive, and you know, we we need those basic needs to be met, and then as we get those needs met, our other aspects of our life need to be fulfilled as well, and one of those, of course, is uh, recognition and a sense of worth, and it seems like in your book, that's where you're trying to head employers and get people in the workplace a little more satisfied with what they're doing and have some meaning to their life. What kind of things are you trying to set forth in the workplace in terms of the employers to make a, an impact in our workplace today? Yeah, you know, James, uh, uh, let me tell you a story that sort of illustrates how I got involved with this. I, I consult with family-owned businesses and deal with issues of working together and transferring businesses across generations. And I had opportunities working with a family in North Carolina and talked to the senior owner, and I said, you know, how do you think it's going? He said, it's, it's you know, going good. My son's stepping up. I think this is going to work. And, you know, pretty positive report. I walk across the hall, talk to his son and say, you know, how's this going for you? He says, not going to work at all. Uh, you know, I can't please my dad. I never can do enough or, oh, you boy. know, make it right. And it was obviously, you know, they were missing each other in communication. And so, you know, our goal is not to try to give people a false sense of worth uh, beyond, you know, how God created work to be part of our life, but to help people be able to communicate uh, effectively uh, in ways that it's received by uh, uh, the person you're trying to encourage or show appreciation to. What, a lot of times I'm working with leaders and they say, you know, I tell my staff I appreciate them and, and they're doing a good job. Um, but the fact is a lot of people just aren't getting that message, partly because words don't mean uh, as much to some people. I had um, uh, a leader tell me, he said, Paul, you know, words don't mean much to me. I grew up in a setting, if somebody praised you, the next thing that was coming was an ask. Uh, that, you know, they're sort of setting you up to ask for, you know, some favor or money. And he said, so when somebody, you know, compliments me, I just, my defenses go up and say, well, you know, what do they want from me? And what we found is that different people are encouraged and feel valued in different ways. And, and the, the five languages help that. And so our goal is to help, in a very practical way, help people be able to uh, feel appreciated and communicate appreciation in a way that's meaningful to the to the people around them. And I think you hit it right on the head when you said there's that disconnect. A lot of times the employer might be 
having some rose colored glasses, hey, everything's great. But then, you, like you said, you go across the hall and it's, it's, it's a totally different picture. What are you finding that employees value? Well, you know, it's pretty basic. I mean, I had one group say, Hollywood really likes to be heard an occasional thanks, you know. And so, I mean, it could be pretty simple, uh, but that uh, thanks doesn't get it for everybody. Uh, there's a number of people that uh, time is important to them, and th- there's different kinds of time in the workplace um, that people value. Sometimes they want individual time just for with their supervisor to, you know, be able to share some thoughts. Sometimes I have people say, I don't want individual time with my supervisor he sort of intimidates me but i love to go out to lunch with my team and you know hang out and chat or get together and watch sports so what we've done uh, with the book the five languages of appreciation in the workplace we created an online assessment tool called the motivating by appreciation inventory where and it comes with every book uh, a code for it comes with it and you can identify not only the language that's important to people but also the specific actions because it differs from person to person so there's words, there's time, there's acts of service. So some people, like I had one leader say, my language is get her done. You know, don't tell me good job, don't get me something, just help me get some stuff done. And um, a lot of people are, are very encouraged when you help them get past the challenge or maybe help take, uh, you know, I had one person recently say, you know, if you could, they could just answer the phones for an hour so I could focus on this project and get it done, that'd be really meaningful. So there's that, and then there's also uh, tangible gifts, which is not, you know, bonuses or raises. It's really just small things that show that you're getting to know the people you work with. It could be, you know, their favorite kind of Starbucks. It could be uh, a gift card to uh, Barnes & Noble or a Christian bookstore if they like to read. It could be, uh, you know, a coupon to go out to dinner um, or a magazine about their hobby. You know, so it's, it's little things. And then, you know, people think and wonder about physical touch in the workplace. What we found is that physical touch uh, is really spontaneous celebration. It's, you know, a high five when you get a project done. It's a fist bump when you, you know, fix a computer problem. It's a handshake when you make a sale. It's a pat on the back uh, when you've done a good job. And so and it, it varies regionally. I know you're out, you're out in uh, the West, and it's not a big issue there. Uh, you know, Southerners tend to be more physical northeasterners clearly aren't but um you know it's it's just uh sort of a natural thing that happens now you have these different categories that you break this down like you said the words of affirmation the quality time acts of service tangible gifts the physical touch uh how when you go into a workplace and you kind of ascertain and try to get a feel for where 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 the situation is at do you find that employers are receptive to this type of uh this type of breakdown or are they surprised by it or what's the typical reaction no, I mean, yeah i mean it depends you know i mean i when i do training i tell people you know there's some people that just aren't too jazzed about appreciation <laughs> how they think <laughs> about stuff and that's fine uh those kinds of leaders tend to have the higher turnover rate so mm. we know that when people don't feel valued they uh leave and quit work more quickly uh, but most people are like, you know, I'm willing to listen. I think this could work, especially when they understand that the real mission is to help you understand uh, what's important to your colleagues so you can hit the mark. A lot of people have tried appreciation, you know, saying words or even, you know, giving a Christmas party, but it's like it didn't work. And so they're like, why should I do this if, if it doesn't any, do any good? And, and we have great both research and results to show that when people feel valued, uh, and then this is actually a chapter in the book for uh, for business leaders. It's called the Re- return on investment of appreciation. People uh, stay longer at work. They show up on time. They uh, your customer satisfaction ratings go up. Uh, your managers like their work more. In some cases, productivity goes up, um, and we reduce the number of uh, accidents um, among workers. So there's a, a financial benefit as well, and. To be honest, you know, most workplaces are so negative uh, that people are just looking for an answer of how do I make this more positive? Well, it seems like uh, you, you definitely want to look at the turnover rate in your company because even, you know, most jobs today 
there's some training and it usually is is several weeks if not longer before you really feel comfortable in that job and it's an investment not only with the employee but also of course the employer has to put that time and effort in and and wait for the the uh, the the employee to kind of catch up and and make sure they know what they're doing whether it's in the retail space or uh, in, in a technical field or what have you so it, it would seem like this um, return on investment is a great idea I just can't imagine anybody saying well you know we don't want to we don't want to look at that you know I mean the flip side of it is I mean some people are like well you know I, I mean I've had leaders say you know my appreciation is I pay them <laughs> you know? and uh, and that's that's an okay starting point, but we know that most people, after a certain amount of money, uh, more money doesn't make them enjoy their work anymore, and it also doesn't make them work any harder. Um, and other people say, you know, I don't really care how they feel. This is about work, and I agree. I mean, our primary purpose isn't just to sort of, sort of la di da, go through the motions and make people feel good. But uh, the, the issue is, you know, to treat one another with respect and to show appreciation and. Uh, encouragement and kindness. I think it clearly fits within our calling as Christians. And I, let me tell you what, this is a great tool for Christians in the workplace that don't work in, you know, a, a Christian ministry or church to be able to get to know their colleagues and be able to communicate love and care and kindness to them in a way that's pretty unusual. And, and I'm excited about that. We, the other thing, it's not just for leaders. I mean, what we found is that anybody can take this. You can be a receptionist, you can be the custodian, you can be, you know, an administrative assistant, salesperson, whatever. You don't have to be at the top of the organization to be able to take this and start to encourage and show appreciation to the people uh, that work around you. And if you've just tuned into the program, I'm talking with Dr. Paul White. He's co-author of the Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace. We're talking about empowering organizations by encouraging people. And we're talking about the different languages of appreciation that uh, people value in the workplace. Uh, Paul, is there these five languages of appreciation? Is there some that are more, I guess, valued by maybe more people than others? Or is it kind of, you know, if you took 100 people, there might be, you know, they're all the percentages pretty much the same in each category? Or or how do you see this? Actually, uh, yeah, words actually are, are the highest level, but it's, it's less than 50% of people identify words of affirmation as their primary language, but it's the highest one. And so if you're going to sort of guess, I mean, that's the one to use. And just, you know, the thing I encourage people to do is, you know, say something specific. I mean, one of the problems with employee recognition is very sort of global engineering. It's like, good job, way to go, we're glad you're part of the team. That doesn't really hit the mark for somebody truly feeling valued and appreciated. So you want to identify what they do or the characteristic that they demonstrate that's valuable to you and why it's valuable to you or your company or to your clientele. Um, so that's the highest and interestingly tangible gifts, which is what most employee recognition uh, programs are built on, is actually the lowest uh, frequency language. And so uh, it's not that people don't want stuff or gifts, but I think the message is um, don't just give me stuff. Um, I need to hear from you that I'm valued or uh spend some time with me or help me out on a project that's uh, important to me. In fact, the number one sort of act of service in the workplace, that in, in the office workplace, is people want help getting their computer to work right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I had the opportunity to speak to a group of Microsoft managers, and uh, I told them that they, they could believe it. I said, no, really, it's tr- true. And, you know, and it's just, it, you may not be the IT person, I'm clearly not, but you know, you can facilitate getting you know, whether it's the printer or the network or whatever, to, to work right so that it makes their life and day easier. And they can say, hey, you know, you're important to me. I want to make sure that you, you have the tools you need to, to get your job done more easily. Is there is there certain types of work that seems to be more satisfying to people than than other types of work? Actually not, you know, and, and, and when we went into this, we've been doing this about six years now, uh, I thought that there would be some industries and types of companies that, you know, this wouldn't apply. But what we found is that it applies across industries and, and types of work situations, uh, including manufacturing, construction, law enforcement. Uh, just setting up um, a seminar with uh, the Air Force 
um, as well as schools and hospitals and uh, nursing homes and insurance offices and even churches and, and inner city ministries. The key factor really is um, that somebody in the organization uh, gets it, that this is important and is willing to, to work on it. And that can be a mid-level supervisor. Um, sometimes it's the, the, uh, the CEO or the director, not always. Um, and so it's more um, uh, appreciation works across the board. And I would say that as far as satisfaction, uh, no, there's no industry or kind of work setting that people like more than, than others because there's multiple factors that go t- together to, to make them enjoy it. I see. Well, it's it's uh, very interesting that you bring out that pay isn't necessarily the number one factor uh, when people leave their jobs, unless, of course, maybe they're doing a new career move or something for, for the pay. But to work for company A and then company B offers some, say, another dollar or two an hour, it, it's interesting that you feel that that's not really a, a, a big reason why people leave. It's It's more... The satisfaction. Yeah, no, the number so. one reason people leave is that they don't get along with their direct supervisor. Mm. Um, and then along with that, it's and part of it is that they don't feel valued or appreciate that they're not listened to, their input isn't considered, they ne- never hear anything positive, they're always criticized. And that's the, the primary reason people leave the workplace. What well, might be interesting for the listeners, uh, we have a website, it's called appreciationatwork.com, and it's the word at, not the ad sign, appreciation at work. And we have a quiz called uh, How Dysfunctional Is Your Workplace? And it's sort of a fun little thing, but it, it helps you understand how bad it can get in some places, and you can sort of compare your workplace to others. Um, because you know, most of the fact is most people don't feel very appreciated or valued or even satisfied at work. Uh, 65% of the people in the workforce report they haven't heard anything positive in the last 12 months which is that's incredible yeah yeah it's amazing to me i think part of it is that there may be their messages that are being sent aren't hitting the mark um but uh but yeah there's just uh, a big gap there that needs help to be filled and you mentioned in your work the difference between recognizing something or person or, or work as opposed to showing appreciation and it seems like the appreciation is more lasting uh where maybe recognition is okay i like what you did there yeah you Uh, know in the in the business world there's a lot of focus on employee recognition and it's sort of like you know catch your employee doing the right thing and call attention to it and that's fine it's it's about you know rewarding positive behavior and things you want to see but dr chapman and i really believe that especially as christians we understand that people are worth more than just um you know, what they do or what they get done. And, you know, there are some days that we are not at our best or, you know, I make mistakes. I don't know about you, but, <laughs> you know, I do. And so <laughs> oh, yeah. do I cease to have value at that point? And the answer is no. And I think it's, as Christians, we understand that we have worth because God made us. And part of our worth can be worked out through work, but that's not the, the, the baseline of it. And so we really help and try to encourage people to see the value and worth of a person, even when they're not performing well, because that can be very encouraging, and that's very different than the secular business place where, I mean, I had one friend who's a high-level salesperson who just laughed in my face when I was talking about her book, and she said, you got to be kidding me. They don't care about me at all. all. As long as my sales are there, I'm good to go. If my sales consistently drop low, you know, I'm on the chopping block, and it's clear sense that it's only about performance, and so... We really want to help people communicate authentic appreciation. That's the other piece that a lot of recognition people in the workplace feel uh, cynical about because they think it's just sort of, you know, disingenuous and they're just going through the motions. And for some people, that's the case. And so we really work at and through the book and the training that we do, um, try to help people only communicate authentic appreciation. And when they aren't, you know, valuing their colleagues to take a look at that and, and work on those issues. And if you're just joining us, I am talking with Paul White, Dr. Paul White, co-author with Gary Chapman, The Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace. And it's talking about empowering organizations by encouraging people. 
And uh, it's been a fascinating conversation. We're talking about the uh, different ways that people can be recognized and not just recognized, but appreciated in the workplace. Uh, how does this work? A lot of our listeners work in churches or volunteer in churches or uh, nonprofits. How would this uh, come into play in the in the volunteer workplace? Because you have some other challenges there. You don't really get too many chances to give away gifts because usually it's nonprofit. They're operating on some type of budget. So, right, uh, right. Well, uh, and in fact, I mean that's one of the benefits of our process is that you don't have to spend much money to make it work. And we work with um, the Salvation Army. Uh, we worked with a number of churches, uh, doing some work with uh, Saddleback Church, um, Compassion International, um, and and both at the staff level and at the volunteer level. Uh, of Because for churches and ministries, you don't want to have to keep recruiting people all the time for whether that's, you know, child care on Sunday mornings or youth sponsors or whatever it might be. And the more that you can help your volunteers and staff feel valued and engaged, they're going to stay and hang in there longer. Um, and the key is to communicate, find out what's important to them and then communicate it in the way that's meaningful to them. Personal example, I my, did something for my church and they wrote me a nice little thank you note and gave me uh, a gift card uh, to Starbucks, which was nice. But I don't drink coffee. And mm. so, you know, it was like, this is good, but, you know, it doesn't do anything. I gave it to my daughter who was a young adult at the time and is like, okay, that got me some points. But then another time, did something that gave me a note and a gift card. It was to a, a sporting goods store, and I like to fish. And so uh, I was all excited, you know, free fishing lures. And so it was just a little bit different. One sort of flew over my shoulder, the other hit me in the heart and, you know, made a, a difference. So we want to help churches and ministries be able to effectively encourage and support uh, the people that work with them so that uh, they'll stay in there. You don't have to keep retraining and, and recruiting. I, for a while, I was doing a lot of volunteer work at our church. They've got a large, uh, a large congregation, so there's there's several services, with the sound and the lighting and and the prep for the just prepping for the weekend. Or, you know, I was at one time probably putting in twenty to thirty hours a week, volunteering, and I loved doing it because there was a sense of camaraderie, and they would have uh, uh, probably once every six weeks or so a kind of a get together maybe at a park or and, and have some food brought out and that really spoke to me because you kind of I, I felt that everybody kind of got together and you know the leaders kind of sat down and kind of made it a point to hey how's it going and touch base with your you know your personal life so like you said there's a lot of different things that nonprofits can do for their volunteers to make them feel part of that team and to, to make them feel valued and make to make the mission important to everybody right yep and the other, just another tip for people that work with volunteers, the key thing is volunteers need to see how what they are doing uh, helps the organization towards their mission. In other words, if you're cleaning the, you know, the churchyard, some, or mowing or whatever, you need to understand how does that help the church in its mission. And so, you know, if you're overseeing that volunteer, you want to say, hey, thanks for doing this because this frees up time that I don't have to do this and I'm able to prepare for you know, Sunday night service or Bible study, whatever. And, you know, they need to see the link there. Yeah, because all those all those can factor into a nice uh, experience as people come to the church. I know here in Las Vegas, the church I go to, like I said, it's it's large. And there's, uh, I you know, I pity the poor people out there directing traffic in July when it's about 110, 115 degrees. But they're out there, they're doing it, and it really really makes the flow go a lot you know people are are it could be easily getting in some accidents out there without their their volunteering and helping that traffic flow so um yeah every every little like like you said every little aspect uh, can come into that mission if as long as the uh, the leaders there are are making sure that the people recognize how important they are to the overall mission right well, Dr. Paul, it has been a very uh, fascinating talking with you. Again, my uh, guest today on the program is Dr. Paul White, and he's the co-author, along with Gary Chapman, of The Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace. We've been talking about empowering organizations by encouraging people. And, Paul, what's that website, again, if people want to do a self-assessment yeah, and get more it's, information? Uh, appreciation at work. 
uh, in the words AD at work. So appreciation at work.com. Or if they can't remember that, just uh, Dr. Paul Flight, drpaulflight.com. We'll get them there as well. And uh, love to have them take a look at that as well as, um, you know, the different resources we've created videos and handouts for people to make things uh, easier for them to apply it. Okay, great. Thank you very much for appearing on the program, taking your time out of your busy schedule. It's been a pleasure. Great. Thanks so much. What's going on? What are they stopping for? Love, wisdom, abundant life. That's my hope for you. You've been listening to The Teachings of Enoch. I'm James Allen, your host. You can contact me by sending a text message to 702-483-7769. That's 702-483-7769. Or online at teachingsofenoch.com. You can listen to this program every week at the same time on KKVV AM 1060, Las Vegas. You can listen online at KKVV.com on your smartphone using the TuneIn radio app or listen anytime at teachingsofenoch.com.